Hello, everybody. This is Paul Wing, and I've come to tell you the story of One String Fiddle. Now, this One String Fiddle I'm going to tell you about was made by a little Tennessee mountain boy named Irby Jourdine. And Irby had a dog named Billiam. Billiam was mostly a hound dog, and that made him a very valuable dog. And he had a right good ear for music, and that made him especially valuable to Irby Jourdine. Now, Irby and Billiam lived in Montgomery County, Tennessee, in a log cabin with Irby's mother and father. This log cabin had two rooms, a kitchen and another room, with a roofed-in place between, which was called the dog trot. The dog trot was a kind of tunnel, running right through the house and open at both ends so you could look right through. And Irby thought it was a fine place to sit and play tunes on his one string fiddle that he had made. And while he played, Billiam, the mostly hound dog, would sit and listen. If Billiam opened his eyes and thumped the floor with his tail when Irby started to play a tune, that meant that it was a good tune and he liked it. But if Billiam shook his head and flapped his ears, that meant he didn't like that tune. That's how Irby could tell whether he was playing a good tune. Now, Irby Jourdine had made his one-string fiddle himself. First, he got himself two coon skins. Billiam helped him to get them by chasing two coons up two trees. So you see, Billiam really helped Irby to make his one-string fiddle. Well, then Irby got an old kettle that he found in a run-down, deserted cabin up the mountain. The old kettle was a little bit run-down and deserted too, but only a little. Now I wondered why Irby wanted two coonskins and an old kettle to make a fiddle out of, because you can't play a tune on two coonskins and an old kettle. Well, the reason he wanted them was that he knew Jake the Peddler had a fine empty cigar box in his pack, and you have to have a cigar box to make a one-string fiddle. So Irby traded Jake the Peddler the coonskins and the old kettle for that cigar box. Then Irby took a nice dry stick of white pine and whittled and whittled it until he got it just the way he wanted it. Then he made square holes in the ends of the cigar box with the point of his knife and fitted the whittled stick into the two holes. Now, of course, a fiddle is no good without a fiddle string. So Irby tried every kind of a string he could find, and he waxed them and he rosined them, but still not a one would give out the kind of a note he wanted when he plucked it. Most of them sounded like this. And you can't make music on a one-string fiddle that sounds like that. Well, Irby was just about to give up when Old Fiddler came along and gave him a real fiddle string off a sure enough fiddle. So Irby sat back on his heels and plucked with his finger. He knew that was a right good tune because Billiam opened his eyes and thumped the floor with his tail. And Old Fiddler surprised Irby by saying, Well, I reckon you'll need a bow for that one-string fiddle if you're going into the fiddling match. Well, Irby didn't think he could go into the fiddling match. But Old Fiddler said, Why not? You might even get third prize. That's 50 cents. But you'll need a new tune. I tell you what, if you get the new tune, I'll give you the bow. Well, Irby did want that bow, because plunking a note is like tossing a stone, it just falls. But with a bow, you can make a note climb like a bird. So Irby said, a new tune? You mean like this? But old fiddler shook his head and said, no, nope, that's turkey in the straw. That's somebody else's tune. This one's got to be original. You go about finding it like this. Maybe you'll hear the song of a blackbird, and then maybe you'll hear a wagon wheel as squeaking along the road, and maybe you'll hear the water tinkling over the stones in the brook. Well, you take a few notes from each one, and you tie them all together, and first thing you know, you got a tune. But you drop down to my cabin, and we'll splice that there old broken fiddle bow together, good as new. And old fiddler got to his feet and went whistling down the mountain path. Just then, Irby heard his mother call. Irby, you hitch up old Marthy and take that load of turnips into town to sell to the store man. Well, as Irby started for town, Billiam jumped up into the wagon and lay down on top of the turnips. 
And as the wheels bumped over the stones and ruts down the hillside, Herbie kept thinking about his original tune. My, how he did need that third prize at the fiddling match, that 50 cents. He needed it to buy a collar for Billiam, with Billiam's own name on it, because he was such a valuable dog. And what's more, there was a wonderful green collar in the window of a store in town that cost exactly 25 cents. And for another 25 cents, Irby could have Billiam's name put on it. Well, just when Irby was thinking about that, he heard something that sounded like this. He looked through the door of the house the sound came from and saw a radio. So that was it, the radio station call. It began to run through his head and get mixed up with turkey in the straw. So it sounded like this. Why, there was the beginnings of an original tune. As Irby thought about this, another wagon passed by. On the seat sat the vegetable man. And as the wagons passed, the vegetable man sang, Turnip salad colored greens. And over his shoulder, Irby saw Billiam open his eyes and wag his tail. So Irby knew that was a good tune, too. Well, way over in the next block, the ice man was calling like this. I got ice here. Irby tried that tune, added to what he had already. He cut the vegetable man's call in two and fitted the ice man in between, and it sounded like this. <whistles> well, Billiam's eyes opened wide and his tail beat a tattoo on the turnips. And Irby was just about to try it again when the wagons stopped, and there they were in front of the store. Now, while the storekeeper was unloading the turnips, Irby and Billiam went off to look at that collar of Billiam's. There it was in the store window, still 50 cents, along with any name you wanted to have put on it. If I can only win that third prize, Irby thought. But while he was thinking that, a newsboy passed him, calling, Constitution! Constitution! Irby whistled it. Then he whistled it a little higher. And just then, he heard a train whistling for a crossing. It sounded faint and far away. My goodness, who'd ever have thought a town would hold so many tunes? Well, Irby was about to turn back toward the store when around a corner just ahead of him came a brass band. There must have been at least 20 men, but the ones that Irby liked best were two men who walked behind all the others. One of them had the biggest drum Irby had ever seen, and the other had a drum that wasn't so big, but made just as exciting noises. And after the band had gone by, Irby heard some more new notes as he and Billiam hurried back to the store. I got coal, I got kindling for to keep you warm. Get your coal, get your kindling now before it's gone. Coal man, coal man, mm -hmm. Well, if it wasn't the coal man. And the coal man repeated part of his tune several times. Say, that was an idea. You could use bits of your tune over and over. Musical notes weren't like words that had to come in just a certain order or they didn't make sense. Take that newsboy's call. If you whistled it and then repeated it a little different, it sounded prettier. Well, Irby was so excited when they got back to the store that he just jumped into the empty wagon and headed for home. All the way, he practiced his tune and tried it first this way and then that to see which way sounded best. And the minute they got home, Irby went to work with his one-string fiddle. And every single day, right up to the night of the fiddling match, he practiced and practiced. And at last, the big night came, the night of the fiddling match. Irby went down the mountain to the schoolhouse with his mother and father and his one-string fiddle, and Billiam, of course. It seemed as though everybody in Montgomery County was there. And old fiddler sort of managed the match. Well, Irby listened to a lot of tunes, and some of them sounded mighty good but still most of them didn't seem so very original. Most of them sounded like things folks heard over the radio 
or like possum up a gum tree or pop goes the weasel. Then all of a sudden, Irby got scared. He had heard so many other tunes that they had driven his own tune right out of his head. He rushed outdoors and sat down on a rock and tried to remember his tune. Now let's see. First those few notes of turkey in the straw, then the radio station call, then the vegetable man, the ice man, the newsboy, the train whistle, the drums, and the coal man, ending with the last bit of turkey in the straw. Herbie had just got it back into his head when he heard old fiddler calling him. Well, he went back in and sat on the edge of the teacher's platform with Billiam at his feet, and he played his original tune. And he knew it was a good tune because Billiam kept time with his tail. <laughs> had finished playing, the folks began to clap and shout, and Old Fiddler told him to play his tune again. So Irby did, and Old Fiddler played it with him, and all the people danced. When the dancers finally got tired out, one of the judges came to Irby and put a fiddle in his hands, a real one like you saw in the mail order catalog. And somebody else was passing the hat, collecting money for old fiddler, Irby supposed. They always did that when there was a dance. Well, Irby was disappointed. After all, he hadn't won third prize, and he didn't know what to do with the fiddle he was holding. So he asked old fiddler. <laughs> old fiddler just laughed and said, why, keep it, it's yawn. You've won first prize. Well, Irby was flabbergasted. And then old fiddler counted 63 cents out into Irby's hand. He said it was Irby's share of the collection. So Irby got the 50 cents he needed and 13 cents besides. And a brand new sure enough fiddle that he didn't expect. And Billiam got the wonderful green collar that he needed. And that is the story of one string fiddle. Thank you.